Joining me now on Practical 365 is Patrick van Bemelen. How are you, Patrick? Hi, Steve. I'm doing fine. How are you? I am not bad. Uh, we've got lovely weather in the UK. It snowed yesterday and it was sunny today. What more could you want? I've got two seasons in two days. Yeah. We had the same, actually, in the Netherlands, so that's really funny, that, you know. <laughs> You did a great video on information barriers uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I wanted to get you on the show to talk a little bit more about that. So information barriers, for those that are uninitiated, what are information barriers? Yeah. Well, information barrier policies, yeah, they're actually policies that you set up in order to, uh, to make sure that um, users are uh, not allowed to share information between each other. So it's uh, actually the most restrictive way of uh, protecting your information, even more than sensitively, sensitivity labeling, sorry, yeah. and, uh, and, and and other uh, possibilities. So yeah, so it's it's actually a really restrictive way and a really good way to protect your information uh, based on departments or group membership. Uh, yeah, that you specify by using segments. So that's actually what you do. So Microsoft Information Protection is a very big beast and there's different levels Absolutely. of that depending on what licensing you've got yeah. so thinking particularly around microsoft 365 enterprise e3 e5 SKUs, yeah. or uh, or the e3 with yeah uh, with the compliance add-on or the security right. add-ons uh, yeah. these provide a lot of different tools and often it is yeah. not just picking one but picking multiple to solve particular challenges so information barriers are that that's part of e5 uh, am i right yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right yeah or the compliance add-on or one of the yeah. uh the insider risk management as well so <clears throat> yeah it's uh, it's up in the higher licenses but yeah at the same time it's really good to, to so yeah. it's so often organizations that need to provide this level of protection that they will be be looking at how they can yeah. use a variety of v5 technologies to accomplish that uh, but so as you say it fits in the compliance area rather than the identity and security aspects of this thing. Yeah. so That's it's good. it's not about protecting files at rest or files in transit as they move around or get downloaded yeah. it's it's putting up walls with inside your tenant itself yeah that's true what you what you actually do is, is, is specify uh based on an attribute uh, yeah. which which uh, departments or uh, uh, persons who are part of a group uh, are allowed or not allowed to share the information to documents for, for example in SharePoint and OneDrive yeah. also in Teams it's also available in Teams so you can have that as well so I, I first came across it with Teams and without those other yeah. aspects it felt a little bit like there was more needed in terms of protecting all of the information that, that could possibly be shared uh, but when I, when I saw your video, I, I hadn't really looked at information barriers before, I must admit. Uh, so I, I thought a common ask I get is we want to stop people from sharing using OneDrive internally yeah. uh, with particular groups of other people. Is that a good use case for it? Uh, yes, I think it is because um, you can be absolutely certain that, uh, that based on the department, as I said before, or another attribute, um, that that even when they select the user or try to use it, uh, it gets immediately blocked. So yeah. it's the most most secure way, and you will, yeah, as I said, you will absolutely, absolutely be sure that um, that the information won't be be shared among others. So. Yeah, it's 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 even more restrictive than sensitivity labeling or any other technology that we use. So yeah, it's it's most restrictive. Yeah. So, but but yeah, it's restrictive in a different type of way. That's the thing because you could use both, That's I true. guess, together. Yeah. So you could have files inside a a, a team site uh, that are protected with sensitivity labels in case yeah. somebody downloads that data and takes it away from that site, but. With a SharePoint True. team site, a team, or if someone shares from their OneDrive, this is yeah. going to put either you may already have sensitivity labels configured. Perhaps you've yeah. classified it so everyone in the org could look at it, for example. But you wouldn't be able to share out of that that location if there's well. the information barriers attached. Yeah, yeah, it's on top of everything. So it's it's mm. it's really the, the 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 main blocker for everything actually. So not only uh, for certain types, but for every 
information that you that, have actually that's together. particularly interesting because oh. when I'd when I thought about this before this this came along um, I'd I'd seen obviously with a multi geo tenant then yeah. there was there is the capability to uh, restrict sharing between geos which for obvious reasons yeah. makes a lot of sense the reasons why you put data in a geo is because it might not be able to be accessed or downloaded locally into another lo you know another geo um, but that of course you know for most organizations isn't really practical for that core I, I want to yeah. stop people sharing from the finance site to the rest of the world or, or the rest of the well, inter yeah. the internal world uh, but again that, that OneDrive use case it's it's came up so many times yeah. where that's that that's one key thing that people want to make more restrictive in terms of what people can do internally because it's it's an area that people worry that this is going to be an ungoverned place uh, True. Yeah. and it doesn't sound like this is the it's not mm. the silver bullet for this but it could stop it, it stops uh, a mesh of sharing occurring between different departments and teams if you're yeah. very careful in the way that you implement the technology that's true yeah well there might be legal requirements or other things that would uh, would require you to do uh, to do a certain uh, type of blocking so those information yeah. barriers would be the best way then to uh, to make sure that it doesn't get shared i, uh, I had a customer late, uh, uh, lately who um, had a problem with uh, uh, that they were finding a way it had um, they designed trucks with special equipment on them. Yeah. And um, and they wanted to uh, to be absolutely certain that the designs that they had weren't shared with other departments. Yeah. So um, what they did actually, or what we eventually did, was um, set up those information barrier policies and put the designers and uh, um, the, the the people who were working in the factory to uh, uh, in, into the same group. And then uh, set those policies so that the information wasn't shared with with other departments. So uh, it actually was a really good use case. And did you mention a uh, factory in your video? Yes, Maybe. I did. So, <laughs> that, so your so your video was inspired by real life implementation yeah. of the technology. That's really that's that's good it to worked. hear. So, and and did that yeah. work really well for them? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they yeah. they were absolutely certain, and we we. Could find all the information uh, when they wanted to uh, when the user wanted to share it, then uh, it would come up in the activity logs. That's one of the parts that you need to do. You need to enable uh, audit logs, so that's uh, really important. And when you do that, then you will see that, uh, that when the user tries to share it, then it's get blocked. So yeah, that was a really uh, good case. So so there's other tooling in the suite that you can use. So Exchange Online for a long long time has had address book policies and. The ability to build these walls using uh, transport rules, effectively, uh, yeah. or mail flow rules, as they're they're called nowadays. Uh, so, could, would you see these being used in combination? Where, if there's a segment where information barriers applies, then yeah. you might have a similar set of rules for address book policies. Uh, well, there's one problem that lies there because uh, when you want to use the, those uh, very policies. Uh, you can't have any address book policies, so that's one of ah. the important parts there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's so, so it's making a decision really about what technology yeah. you're going to use, and then picking the right one. You can't use these yeah. in tandem. Then. Uh, and what, you, and what you could do is create transport rules, of course, which would block those communications. So that would be yeah. a solution for when you want to uh, block email communication. Yeah. So yeah, and again, if you're building these out of attributes, potentially. Um, an opportunity to use the same source of of data to build these up, but you yeah, can't you can't combine them with address book policies. Yeah. That's that's yeah. interesting. So we've we've used it in the real world. It's it's working well. And, and a key piece of advice from you was to to make sure that this is driven by business reasons, legal reasons, not necessarily yeah. just IT governance desires. Uh, no, not completely, because um, sometimes it's, it's it's more required to have that in place because of regulations and yeah. And, yeah when you want normal government uh, governance, sorry, um, sensitivity labels might be more appropriate um, yeah. sometimes. But yeah, this is just uh, when you when you do need this, and then it's really important to have it implemented. And of course, planning is really important. You have to uh, kind of plan beforehand before you start creating those policies, of course, because once you've applied them, 
uh, you are able to remove them, of course. Um, yeah. But that will create some hassle because when somebody was uh, part of a segment before and then gets placed into another segment, of course, could make some some uh, yeah some strange behavior sometimes. So I think it's important to have a plan ready when you uh, when you start so, creating them. So get get the plan ready and use this alongside the other tools as well. So as yeah. you say, sensitivity labels. You might have access reviews on the data as well for what's right. shared. A whole combination of tools. But this is one. Absolutely tool in the bag that you can use where there's a specific requirement and that that one yeah. where sharing information between different parts of the business again I've heard that come up a lot perhaps where they've got competing clients working for them and there needs yeah. to be a guarantee that those staff working on one project don't share right. or can't share information with staff working on the other project as well so contractual requirements as well Yes, that's it. And sometimes also, as you said, um, uh, localization issues. So when, when legal requirements require you to have your data only into a specific country or a specific way, then this could also be an, uh, a tool to use uh, uh, to protect the information. It's, it's a really useful tool to have in the back. And for, for, for people in the, on the customer side, this is solving you know, yeah. real problems that were, were very difficult to solve before as well. So it gives Absolutely. the business value, which is you know, obviously what all of this is all about with a lot of the Microsoft 365 implementations. It's not yeah. about just putting all the locks on, it's about trying to align the technology to what the yeah. business needs, securing yeah. it at the same time, and also trying to make it pretty simple to use. And this is something where it's not a client that you have to install on top of it, it just works that way. That's on right. your project though, did you have to do any user communications to let people understand the new behaviors that and so there wasn't a flurry of, of service desk calls saying i can't share with fred anymore yeah i can't share yeah. with jane yeah that, that, that was the case and of course uh, people were asking why uh, are you implementing this and because it's yeah. a strange um, it, it could lead, lead to some some unexpected behavior so yeah <clears throat> what we did is we did some communication up front to yeah. ensure that users weren't uh, surprised by it and of course we explained why the uh, the policies were activated so and there was a good understanding because it, it's just a requ it was a requirement there and also uh, for certifications and things like that so th yeah it was just it was needed and and also it's of course it's always a complete story it's not just the information barrier policies you can look at uh, a lot of things of course like inside of risk management and yeah it's not it's not only uh, the, this isn't the holy grail of course it's, yeah it's, it's, one, it's of the, one of the tools you've got uh, and you've got a massive tool belt with, with the five licensing. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, and I know sometimes you, you know, there's a lot of people who'll be watching this saying, well, I haven't got these, these tools. And I, I come across customers today who only have Office 365 E3 licensing, sometimes yeah. E1. Uh, but a growing number of customers you know, are, are buying this uh, because, it, yeah. it, because it's, it's doing a lot of these things. Uh, it is. That, that they need so it's a big tool belt but yeah you can't you can't just implement what one technology but uh, at, at most of the times if you explain why and 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 sometimes just customers come up with it themselves because they they found out you know i want a defender for endpoint or i've seen that technology can you explain me why i need it and then eventually you come to the five story and then yeah when you get there of course maybe they they find that the requirements and then at the same time they want to information barrier policies so that yes yeah. it, it really grows you know it's, it's not just one one part that 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 that's yeah that's the best so yeah. well thank you for joining us on the show today that was a really interesting conversation of course watch the youtube video uh, if you want to understand how to implement this patrick walks you through the whole process end to end in i, I think it was about 10 minutes so uh, I bet it didn't take 10 minutes with the customer you implemented it for, though. So there's a, a very whistle-stop implementation of getting it in place. It is, yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks for having me, Steve, on the show. And um, uh, also for Teams, uh, when you want to, uh, want to implement it as well, I've got one, uh, one blog on my, uh, on my own website as well. So www.patrickfrombemmel.nl. And uh, you can find it there. And, uh, yeah, thanks very much, sure, Steve. Yeah, be sure to check that out. Thanks very much. Thanks, Steve. Bye-bye.